Good morning. We are streaming and recording from Nora in Gardner this morning. So glad that you could join us either live while we're watching or later on our recorded version. We will begin our service this morning with It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Again, welcome. Good morning. It's a busy week around here. We've been getting ready uh, for the Christmas Eve service. We've been working on recording different pieces. Um, I will just kind of go through what the next week is going to look like. We have this Sunday service uh, that we're doing right now, which is blessed with the Christmas program. You can catch it later at 10 where it will be just the program, but I wanted it inserted in this service too, so I surprised John and asked him to plug it in today too. So you're going to see it during this service as well. Um, and then Wednesday, I'll be doing my last Advent devotion at 7 o'clock. So if you can pop in and, and join me for that or watch it later, that's fine too. And then Christmas Eve night at 7 o'clock, um, we will have our Christmas Eve candlelight service. And you'll be able to find that from our, our Facebook page, our website, and then on YouTube. So I hope that you can join us. And then December 27th, Sunday, the December 27th, we're actually going to take a Sunday off. I apologize for that, but we're exhausted, and we know that people are still celebrating that Sunday as well. So we just decided that it was a time for us to all take a moment, rejoice in the birth of Jesus, and have a relaxing Sunday morning, have an extra cup of coffee, or maybe sleep in a little bit, and then we'll be back with you the first Sunday in January, streaming again as well. Um, the council has met this week, and we have decided that we will stay online through the mo month of January, so you'll continue to see us streaming. We're meeting um, in, ja in January, more towards the end, to decide what will happen for February. You can also expect a phone call, if you're a member of the churches, a phone call, um, kind of getting your uh, feel on where you're feeling we're at as far as coming back to church and being in person uh, together in the, s in the services. So you'll expect a phone call from that. Newsletter will go out the first week of January. So it's just a crazy, crazy busy time. So let us begin our service this morning with our invocation. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your offspring forever and build your throne for all generations. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And I will make him the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. My steadfast love I will keep for him forever, and my covenant will stand firm for him. At this time, this morning, we will light our Advent wreath again. for us embodied in our Savior's birth. Christ is our light and the source of everlasting love. 
Advent calls us to love others with patience and kindness. Christ is our light and the source of everlasting love. Advent calls us to be slow to anger and quick to forgive. Christ is our light and the source of everlasting love. Advent reminds us that Christ commanded us to love as he loved. Christ is our light and the source of everlasting love. This morning we light four candles, the candles of hope, peace, joy, and today's candle, love. This candle reminds us that God so loved the world that he sent his only son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have life everlasting. Today we celebrate God's gifts of love and remember that we have been commanded to love others as God loves us. This time we'll do our confession and absolution. Let us confess our sins to God and ask his forgiveness. Almighty God, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and actions. We seek to satisfy our own needs instead of serving others in love. We turn from listening to your word to listening to the tempting voices of the world. Have mercy on us and forgive us. Help us to walk in your ways. God has had mercy on us. He sent his only son, the firstborn son of Mary, to be our savior. Jesus, our savior, died on the cross and rose from the dead to bring us forgiveness and life. I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. And let us say together the prayer of the day. Almighty God and Father, as we prepare to celebrate the birth of your Son, fill us with your peace, peace that we cannot find on our own, peace that the world cannot give to us. Help us by your Spirit to live in love and service to others and to be bold witnesses for our Savior so that others will come to know and worship Jesus as Lord. Hear our prayers and accept our praise. In his name, amen. Well, I have to say, I am super excited. I have not had a chance to see the Christmas program as well. I obviously would have much rather had you all gathered up here in the front of the church and the pews all full of people and in anticipation of watching our children's Christmas program. That's how it should be. But at this point, we've got to do what we have to do to keep everybody well. So we have, we've done some fancy uh, recording at homes and John, our, our wonderful tech guy, put it all together. And so at this point and this time, I announce to you the world premiere of the Kirkovo and Nora Children's Christmas Program for 2020. Enjoy.
can just use your imagination. It's Christmas and you can see it, hear it, smell it all around you. I think it smells all cinnamon and sugary and piney and it looks like lights, gifts, and nativity sets. And the sounds. Well, that's just about the best part. Lots of laughter and plenty of thank yous. Fill the air, but it's the song of Christmas that helps us to remember why we're celebrating. Some of the songs of Christmas have been sung for over a hundred years. And every time we sing them, we fill the air with the good news of the birth of Jesus. Bethlehem must have been a sight to see on the night Jesus was born. This little town was running over with people because Caesar ordered everyone to get to their hometown to be counted. If you think the malls are crowded, well, let's just say that the shopping rush is nothing compared to what happens when Caesar orders the census. You were right. Bethlehem was crowded with travelers and in all the crowds and the noise most of the people would miss the great greatest greatest miracle miracle the birth of jesus god's son like so many others Mary and Joseph also had to travel to Bethlehem to be counted, but they were just ordinary travelers. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger. Bethlehem may have been overrun with travelers. Not everyone was caught up in the crowds and noises of the census. There were some poor shepherds out in the field with their sheep. If there was anyone around who needed to hear the good news, it was those guys. Yes, good news. That was believed by God angel, and it was for everyone and everywhere. The angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A Savior has just been born in David's town. A Savior who is Messiah and Master. This is what you are to look for. A, for a baby wrapped in a blanket, lying in a manger. Then the angelic choir filled the heavens and sang praises to God. Glory, glory, glory. 
Glory to God in the highest. 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 In the highest. The shepherds are not the only ones who got a heavenly invitation to worship baby Jesus. Wise men from the east saw a new star in the sky that signaled the birth of a great king. Guided by that star, they began the long journey to find and worship baby Jesus. The Bible says that the star went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. The wise men were overjoyed, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him gifts of gold and incense and of myrrh. To see the precious gifts the wise men brought. To feel baby Jesus' little hand around my finger. But the truly amazing, amazing. amazing things is that we get to ex experience. experience justice right here. Right now, his birth is just a really to us as it was to the shepherds and the whistle wise men. And like those first Christmas visitors, we've just got to keep telling everyone about the birth of the Son of God.
we've sung the songs of the Christmas story, does Christmas look, smell, and sound the same to you? I'd say that Christmas looks, smells, and sounds like love. God gave his son for us the ultimate gift or love. Everything about Christmas is wrapped up in love. Christmas is all about love, God's love for us, our love for him, and our love for others. It is possible because of Jesus. That's why we celebrate! That's why we sing! Wow, how do you how do you top that? Wasn't that the greatest? I got to watch it while you watched it as well. Uh, John and I were having a good little laugh over there. I can't thank you parents and kids enough for doing all of that taping at home and at the churches and stuff. Your costumes were great. Your lines were perfect. Your singing was wonderful. And it was so very, very fun, 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 fun to have a Christmas program in this uh, different time. So I do have to, he doesn't know I'm going to do this, and he didn't dress for church today because we just kind of have him behind the camera. But I need John to come up here for a minute. Got your mask on. I got mine on now. And I just want John to be on camera so that you can see who does all the work behind all my crazy ideas. So here's a hand for John. I'm sure you're all clapping at home as well. Um, thank you. I can, I, I, we couldn't do any of these services without you, so thank you so much. So, all right. He, uh, he hasn't even seen what I've got planned all for Christmas Eve yet, so he can be... Oh, hang on. We lost our mic for a minute. How's that? Do you hear me? Okay. He hasn't even uh, seen the Christmas Eve service yet, so he has no idea. He's smiling under that mask right now, but he hasn't seen my ideas yet for Christmas Eve, so we'll see. But let us be continue in our service with our gospel. This morning's gospel comes from John 3. And Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The gospel of our Lord. Sorry I stumbled, but I see all these clapping hands on my screen. John, so just so you know, they're, they're clapping as well. Our message this morning is called Her Firstborn. Were Adam and Eve proud of their firstborn son, Cain? Perhaps not later in life, but surely they were proud when he was bored, born, proud and grateful to God. At Cain's birth, Eve said, I've gotten a man with the help of the Lord. She may have thought that this already was the child that God had promised to send, the child of the woman who would destroy the tempting serpent. Perhaps this was the child who would undo the terrible damage done in Eden the child who would restore what was lost. But the time for that child of promise had not yet come. Those first parents may have had high hopes for their firstborn son, but those hopes would not be fulfilled. Instead of destroying the tempting serpent, Cain, like his parents before him, fell to the serpent's power. 
Cain grew jealous of his younger brother Abel because the Lord received Abel's offering, but not Cain's with favor. And Cain acted out of his jealous anger and murdered his brother. As Adam and Eve had been sent out of Eden, so the Lord sent Cain away from his home. Generations later, another child of promise appeared. This was the son promised to Abraham and Sarah, parents that were too old to have children. But the Lord fulfilled his promise, and the son was born. The child was named Isaac, a name that means he laughs, a reminder that his parents had laughed at the promise of his birth to such an elderly couple, only to laugh with joy and delight at his birth. Yet once again, it appeared that the story of this firstborn son was not going to turn out well either. God commanded Abraham to offer up Isaac, his only son, his only son at that late age in life as a sacrifice. So trusting in the promise, trusting a God who, would even, who could even raise up the dead, Abraham obeyed the Lord's command, and Isaac went along willingly, believing what his father Abraham told him, God will provide for himself a lamb for a burnt offering. The God who demanded a sacrifice would supply that sacrifice. As Abraham took up the knife to kill his son, an angel called out to him to stop. God provided a ram for Abraham to offer up instead of his son, and on that mountaintop place of death, God provided a sacrifice. There are some research who make some researchers who make such make a big thing out of birth order, suggesting that the order of birth, the firstborn, the middle child, the youngest child, determines the personality and behavior of a child. Whether we agree or not, one does not have to find a special place in the family birth order to receive the stain of sin that's passed down from Adam and Eve. Sons and daughters of the first parents, like Cain, we too also bear that stain. And like Cain, we express our sin in our thoughts and our words and our deeds and actions. No, we may not physically go to the level that they did back then. Of course, we don't go around taking the lives of those that we don't like. Scripture leaves no doubt about our sin, though, and we really do have more in common when, with Cain than we would like to admit. We, too, grow jealous of what others, what others have or are, of others who have what we think we deserve. Firstborn or not, sins stain our lives. Cain did not live up to the expe expectations of Adam and Eve. We do not. We cannot live up to the Heavenly Father's expectations. For as Jesus said, you therefore must be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect. The penalty for anything less than perfect, as Adam and Eve learned so long before in the garden, is death. Yet as he did for Abraham and Isaac the Lord, the Lord does for us what God demands he provides. He demands perfection, and he provided that perfect son, his only son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God offered up his only son as a sacrifice in our place for our sins. God kept the promise he had made to Adam and Eve that a child of the woman would come to crush the power of the tempting servant. God kept the promise to Abraham that out of the nation formed of his descendants would come a blessing to every nation, to every family on earth. When the time was right, God sent his perfect son, born of a woman, Mary of Nazareth. God's only son was Mary's firstborn son, born in Bethlehem. She wrapped her precious son in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. When he was grown, his firstborn son of Mary would be offered up as a sacrifice on the altar of a cross. Like his ancestor Isaac, he too would carry the wood for the offering. In this case, it was a cross to the place of a death. He would humbly submit to his father's will, as Isaac did, because it was his father's will that he should die for the sins of the world. This time, though, no angel would intervene. For Isaac, God stepped in to stop the sacrifice. For his only son, God turned away as Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So long before in Eden, God has decreed the penalty for de of death for all who sinned and rebelled against him, from Adam and Eve and Cain all the way down to our day and beyond. But what God demanded, he provided. He provided the lamb of sacrifice, the lamb born in a stable in Bethlehem. Jesus, the perfect, innocent son of God, carried our sins in his own body to the tree of the cross, and there he endured the penalty of death that we earned for ourselves. 
on that mountaintop place of death, a hill we call Mount Calvary, God provided a sacrifice. Jesus was taken down from the cross and buried. But as Abraham had believed so long before, this is a God who raises the dead. And on the third day, on that first Easter morning, Jesus rode from, rose from the dead victorious over sin and death, victorious over that tempting serpent. God exalted him, raising him to his right hand, giving him all authority in heaven and on earth. Jesus is the firstborn from the dead. On the last day, on the last day, when Jesus returns, we who trust in him will be raised up bodily from our graves to share his glory and live in his presence forever. Abraham started the promises of God, and so do we, for we have his promise in Scripture. And we know for those that who love God in all things, God does work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn, firstborn among many brothers. The Lord provides, and he provided for us exactly what we needed, that lamb of sacrifice. Through faith in Jesus Christ, through baptism, we are born again as God's sons and daughters. We have an inheritance in heaven, an inheritance that was won for us by the firstborn son, born in a stable in Bethlehem. It's God's own son and Mary's firstborn, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world who takes away our sin. Amen. Let us say our prayers for the day. Each petition will end with Jesus, Son of Mary and Son of God, and your response is hear our prayer and accept our praise. Jesus, Lamb of God, with your humble birth, your perfect life, and your death and resurrection, you fulfilled the promises of God. You were offered up as the Lamb of sacrifice for the sake of our salvation. Jesus, Son of Mary and Son of God, hear our prayers and accept our praise. Jesus, Lamb of God, we pray that you would work through us to comfort people who are ill or fearful, those who doubt and those who are trapped in the darkness of sin. Give us opportunities to serve them in love and share with them the good news of salvation. Jesus, Son of Mary and Son of God, hear our prayer and accept our praise. Jesus, Lamb of God, you are the firstborn from the dead, and we will follow you into eternal life. We look forward to your second advent, that glorious day when you will raise us up from the graves as you were raised. We will live in your presence for all eternity, praising you then as we praise you now. Jesus, Son of Mary and Son of God, hear our prayer and accept our praises. Jesus, Lamb of God, even when we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve us. Deliver us and fulfill your purpose for us. According to your steadfast love, grant healing and wholeness to those who are mourning as they deal with tremendous loss. We ask that you continue to send healing to those dealing with illness and recovery. We lift up those that are within our congregation and those that have reached out to us for prayers. We pray this morning for Jeff. We pray for Kirk and Brent. We continue to pray for Paxley. We continue to pray for Vern and Veronica, for Lisa. And I would add, we pray for Kaylee and Tiana and all of those that we now name silently in our own hearts. Jesus, Son of Mary and Son of God, hear our prayer and accept our praise. And be with us, Lord, as we say the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. People of God, hear this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our closing hymn today is the first Noel. Sweet and worshipped, we feel.
it's fun as that song was playing I was looking through some of the comments yes Mike I have no doubt that Elena would have loved the program she'd have been laughing and giggling just as much as John and I were as well so I am I am again thankful to all of those that helped participate with the recording at home uh, the big sisters singing along with the younger sisters thank you for that um, again for to John and all of those that will also be helping with our Christmas Eve service I did neglect to, to mention uh, the food shelf yesterday provided Christmas baskets of food for 16 families in the area so we want to thank them and thank um, all of you for the continued support that you give us also we are still in the middle of our um, helping spread our light uh, fundraiser you can find that on our, our Facebook Facebook page and our website um, we're, we still haven't met our goal so we're going to keep that going for a little bit longer hoping that we can get our system upgraded because even when we're back in the pews we intend to continue to send our message out on Facebook and other other means so that those that are not able to come for some reason or they're traveling or they're at the lakes or whatever are still able to catch the service so I appreciate all of you being with us again I will quickly go over the week schedule Wednesday night uh, last Advent worship at seven o'clock you can catch that the Christmas Eve service will be broadcast at seven o'clock on Christmas Eve night um, and then no Christmas service or no service on Sunday December 27th so realize on Christmas Eve if you can't watch it at seven it'll be there you can watch it anytime after that and that kind of stuff I do invite you to watch it's it's going to be a very special service um, so I do hope that you're able to catch that at some time whether it's you know while you're having your Christmas Eve dinner or whatever just take a moment to watch it it, it won't be a, a super long service but it's going to be a very beautiful and meaningful service so with that I will bid you adieu if you need something please reach out to me for those that are traveling and aren't won't be able to catch the services this week and and are able to visit with family I, I ask that you have safe travels that you enjoy your time together but continue to be safe and well God bless Amen.